we go. Glasses. I need something to drink too. They're not calling me on the show. Of course, I've turned it into Madera County. Lots of congestion there. With TMJ traffic, I'm Rodney here. Brought to you by Chick Chansey Gold Resort and Casino. Chuck Chansey got the game and a $27,000 Monday Night Showdown giveaway. Every Monday at kickoff during the NFL season, join us and win big in our table game drawing. You can win cash throughout the game. See you here every Monday night only at Chuck Chansey. AMJ's Afternoon Drive with Philip Torres and E. Curtis Johnson. So on the heels of the announcement that Elon Musk is going to try the uh, themed out alcohol thing again, we got an update from NPR on the experiment in getting off of Twitter. Have you seen the cyber beer, Cyberstein combo that Elon Musk is now putting on offer for $150? Okay. Yeah, I can't tell if it's a smart speaker or an obelisk, uh, obelisk um, leftover from a Star Trek episode. If you're, yeah, if you're going to see a chimpanzee make the leap on how to start using tools. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's black, funky-shaped, uh, two steins and two bottles. But yeah, they could very easily be like the bad guy's menacing magical talisman from a Star Trek knockoff. But they're intended to be reminiscent okay. of the jaw-dropping ugliness of the, uh, the Cybertruck that is soon to be released. So for $150, you can get two bottles. Now the teetotaler in me says, what a horrible marketing comparison. In other words, you're 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 promoting a product, beer, uh, that you shouldn't be consuming while you're in the truck. Yeah, correct, correct. It's it's a strange marketing matchup. Yeah, but there's there's a cultural. That's the thing is there's a cultural connection, not to like just all face DUI, but pickup truck guys drink beer. And, and, and the, the, I think the easiest association in the world for somebody to make a two grand that should not be combined is Ford or Chevy pickup trucks and Coors or Budweiser beer. True. But the difference here is at least Ford and Chevy trucks, while they you know, may have uh, you know, an argument about which is best, they're at least manly trucks. When, when you look at that thing, whatever that weird, angular, so-called truck it is that um, uh, Elon has exuded from the depths of his mind, there's, there's no guy who, who's really a guy who's going to want to be seen in that. Oh, no, they're going to be the place in the yeah, I mean, th those guys would, would let me take them for a ride. Oh, it's not how you draw it. Before they would ever be seen in that truck. This is how I know that Elon knows his audience. The beer being produced by Buzz Rock Brewing, Brewing Company, mm -hmm. which is located not far from Tesla's Florence Schroeder, uh, they are describing it, uh, Tesla is, as a... Teleslager with European noble hops, fuzz, and hollertown. If that sounded like a bunch of words salad to you, it's because you're not a beer. And if you're if you're not a if you're not an IPA pervert, those words don't necessarily translate. Let me help. A Helles Lager is a German lager that is on the bitter end of the spectrum. So it's a heart light beer. That's not a bad thing. A tart light beer can be refreshing. Think, so, think about the kind of beer one would consume after, say, knowing the law. Think about that beer. Then you've got European Noble Hops. Uh, okay, you're, you're 
throwing up the syntax on how those words go together to try and make them sound fancier than they are. Saz hops are a noble breed of hop. Not noble as in royalty, noble as in genus. And they're bitter. So for you beer drinkers, now you're going to head out into like Stella Artois territory. Very dry, very tart. And then the Hallertau Mittelfra is like a super pungent iteration of hops. So we have a tart light beer with basically three kinds of very, very bitter hops. This is going to taste like crap. <laughs> Do you drink a lot of beer or, or some? I, I enjoy, I, I don't drink a lot of beer, but I enjoy beer. My taste has always kind of gone heavier and dark. I like Belgian ales, I like porters, I love uh, Imperial Stouts, Beef Stouts, Russian, the, the, the Russian Stouts of the 50s. Uh, but you're drinking the higher end of the product. Well, what, 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 what I, yes, I mean, I'm not about going out and getting a six pack of coolers because we're getting up like a food grill. Jaywalk. It's, it's, it's a clear yellow white beer. That's it. That's what we know. Maybe you know what a red is. Maybe you know what a porter is. Maybe you, you have a variety of hops that you're aware of because you couldn't escape that guy with the name. Normal people don't. This is for weirdos. This is for perfect. Same thing. Okay, so so in other words, he, he he thinks he thinks that the market for his truck is hipsters. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it's sure, certainly not for working men. Yeah, no, no, no. The kind of guy who's going to crack a long neck Budweiser or a Coors Banquet or a or or God help us all a Miller High Life is never going to touch this. Thing. So I, I do a fair amount of driving and have done a fair amount of driving for the last six years. Yeah. So as soon as Tesla started showing up, I saw them everywhere. I actually knew some people who, who bought them. I have been seeing pictures of that truck for at least four years, yeah. but I have yet to see one of those trucks on the streets. I've seen lots of, of the, what is it, three or four models of Teslas that they oh, are. Yeah. I mean, he's clearly selling those. I've never seen one of those trucks. Is it actually in production? They are in production. I don't believe any of them. There, there have been issues with the materials, there have been issues with the engineering. Uh, if the truck ever does what he said he wanted it to do, it'll actually be a formidable vehicle for like urban construction. In terms of it ever replacing Ford, Chevy, or even Dodge, so is it going to have, in terms of torque uh, or payload, is it going to have uh, superior capacities it, to, to haul heavy loads? So, it, as in all things, you've got the spec. Because, you know, we can talk about a pickup truck being a Mitsubishi 9 which is 
basically wind up. Uh, all the way up to like the King Ranch F-350 Super Crew Long Bed Dually. And that's just in the so-called consumer. That's in the the 400, 500, 600 series trucks. Uh, um, the cyber truck is a engineered to be competitive with like the 2500 series, the Upper Chevy, the 250s from the Ford, that kind of thing. Okay, all right, I can get my mind around that. I know the size of those things. Yeah, and, and so it's, it's going to be big, it's going to be strong, it's going to be intended to be capable of towing or carrying both of them. And the kind of people who are going to buy them. It's going to be hipster in around San Francisco. And that's okay. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with my fork. But then if we can get the hipster forks to go by these people, then we're going to get a pickup truck and put them in the last minute. Pickup trucks. Toys. Let's face it. Sometimes people who have money, and you're going to have to have money to buy one of these successful trucks, right? Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're going to be a complete eye and I think that that's going to be one of the other problems, is if you are the kind of guy who is trying to look rich by virtue of the vehicle that you drive, considering the price point of where this is at, you can get a hell of a lot of Chevy Ford or a Dodge for the same price. You, you'll be able to go get like a 3500 series big horn ram seats wrapped in the seat but obviously, cyber trucks are going to work with people who are looking for an electric. People who, are, who want to make a transition from the gas power to an electric. Fair? Approaching a railroad crossing. exists beyond the first two to three years of production. It is going to exist primarily in the status of It'll be physically capable of doing this stuff with like an F-150 or a Chevy 2500 but that's not how people provide that. So we, going back to the early 80s, we have a DeLorean that's in with the payload. Yes, yes, although I would argue the DeLorean is actually there. Yeah, that's true, yeah, when that, when the DeLorean came out, that was cool. But that truck is... It's an eyesore. It, it's an eyesore. And if you're interested in buying the beer that's meant to accompany the truck, you can check it out to the beer. Uh, it's $150 for two bottles. Woo! The Rich Revival. It's Philip Charles. I'm Curtis Johnson. Thanks for listening to the Afternoon Drive. Right here on KMJ at KMJ.com or wherever you stream. And taking a look at traffic in the Fresno metro area, the 41 north of the 180 interchange. Also southbound from Bullard to Gettysburg, southbound 99. Stop and go area there. Northbound 99 and north of downtown Fresno. It's really clogged. There's no cleanup going on after the accident there earlier. Southbound 99 from Ballard, Selma, and up due to lane closures in Visalia and uh, at 377 South Oakmore Street. Uh, just a little while ago, there was a collision. Entries involved there. And in the Portico area, Road 228, Avenue 188, there was a collision with a no injury. Being informed is starting tonight at 11 o'clock in this section, West Shaw and Grandland will close the traffic for breathing uh, and paving improvements and will reopen Monday at 6 a.m. and uh, close it. The Angela Fowler flashing red light due to uh, road conditions. Can't be a traffic that runs there. For most truck owners, they don't even consider their truck done until they have that all-important camper shell. But which That's camper sweet. shell? How about from Snowcop or Lear? Totally the biggest names in the camper shell business, and who's got them? They are one of the biggest, if not the biggest dealer of Snowcop and Lear. In this area, it's the Noble Brothers Truck Accessory Center. And the cool thing about it, you don't have to drive out of the country to some urban area that's this big, dusty lot and look at dirty camper shells. No, I don't know why, but that's how it is most of the time. You can check Snug Hop and Lear out for your truck at the 
Noble Burr's Truck Accessory Center in Fresno or out in Clovis. If you pick up one of these great camper shells, make sure you ask about the deal on rhino lining. For over 40 years and beating everybody Approaching a railroad crossing. Price, it's the Noble Brothers Truck Accessory Centers. Consider your ride absolutely complete with a camper shell from Snug Top Fort Lear. Well, I nobody does it better. <laughs> Have you seen that? Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, and everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit 40, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Providers. Speak with Big Lou. 800-555-1509. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term providers help thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-555-1509. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-555-1509. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-555-1509, 800-555-1509, or BigLou.com. Attention cancer victims who use the weed killer Roundup and have been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You may be owed significant compensation by the manufacturer of this dangerous product. The Roundup Cancer Lawsuit Attorneys of Adrich Law Group are actively investigating Roundup claims. If you were diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or other cancers, use Roundup at your home, use it as part of your job, or for agricultural purposes, you may be entitled to significant compensation for medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering, or the loss of a loved one. The Nadrich Law Group has hundreds of Roundup cases against the manufacturers. If you qualify, we want to represent you or your loved one. There is limited time to make a claim, so call Nadrich Law Group for your free confidential consultation while there's still time to file a claim. With local offices in the Valley to serve you, Nadrich Law Group guarantees if we don't win, you don't pay. Call now, 885-1922. That's 885-1922. 885-1922. They're pounding on the door. They're calling on the phone. They're threatening to close your business. If debt has your business on the brink, call Ray Reynolds, the godfather of credit. For over 40 years, Ray Reynolds has helped thousands of customers get millions in cash credit. It's no wonder why they call Ray the godfather of credit. He may even be able to raise your score above 750 before the end of the year. You can even get a new personal or business credit line up to $50,000 within days. If your credit needs a rebuild, call Ray Reynolds and receive a $1,000 cash credit card at closing. Raise your credit score to 750 or more. Call Ray Reynolds at 800 437 8110. 800 437 8110. Nonetheless, they, they left. And six months later, 
um, when they've done an evaluation of what they've really lost by leaving, it's pretty much nothing. Yeah, the, um, the fluctuation in traffic as a consequence of no longer participating on the Twitter platform was approximately 1%. Uh, I was really encouraged this week. Because you, uh, now, you do listen to NPR occasionally, if I, if I remember you saying Yeah, of course I yeah. I, 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 I try to consume news and information from every available source. And we actually happen to have a great NPR president. So, I, yeah, I, if, if, there's, if there's no other program in there, um, go find the Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me podcast. You tax dollars. Um, whether you got any use for them or not, they are a significant presence in the radio landscape. They do have their fan base. And for them to leave a platform where they had theoretically millions followers and to only see a single percentage point in variation of traffic on their primary site, meaning like npr.org, their podcast, all that stuff, it says a lot about what Twitter actually does. Twitter is not for, for people who do what they do and what we do. It's not actually penciling out as a beneficial place to expend resources. For this one particular product, meaning NPR. Mm, I'm going to do my own experiment. I'm going to stop using Twitter. Completely. I'm going to stop putting anything from... I, I'm going to put a note up on the Drive KMJ thing saying, hey, we love you guys, and if you want to keep up with us, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, you can find us at drivekmj.com, but... We are done with Twitter for now. So I'm going to make a comparison here. Sure. And uh, the, the people that write our, our checks and sign them may not like this comparison. But KMJ and NPR are brands. They are they are well-known brands. Yeah. They are very different in, in the audience that they reach and in, in what we broadcast. We so. do the exact same things with two completely different audiences. Yeah, the audiences are different. But we're already established brands. Yeah, one of the lures of the of the internet in general um, is that we we sometimes thought of the internet as a way to attract a yeah, new audience. Good. Yeah, of here, course. Here was this new thing coming up. Yeah. People were spending time with it. It was a marketplace, and broadcasting entities like KMJ and NPR wanted to be in that marketplace. I think what we found, though, oftentimes, as NPR did, is that. Those marketplaces don't don't lead into the other. They are they are they are polar opposites in who they reach. So I think that there's three things that have altered the usefulness of social media specifically. Because having a presence online is essential for a business. It is it is. Suicide not to exist on, uh, online and to be available to your customers online. And I will maintain that having a social media presence as a gateway for people to find your website is useful. But that is all that it is, is it is just another iteration of search engine optimization. Except that the search engine is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. The people on those platforms, and Twitter's especially in this although I would argue that it exists across social media, the people on Twitter are waiting for their turn to talk. They, they are not really interested in hearing anybody else's perspective, and they are not interested in walking away from this little vortice of stupid because they're waiting for their chance to strike a blow, not in terms of doing anything productive, but just hopefully making somebody mad enough or laugh hard enough 